In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve any type of series parallel combination circuit like this one. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to calculate the equivalent resistance. So notice that these three resistors are in series with each other. And so the equivalent resistance of those three is going to be 5 plus 3 plus 2, which is 10. So we can replace those three resistors with a single 10 ohm resistor. Now every other part of the circuit is going to remain the same initially. So this is 10 ohms. And this is still 10, this is still 5, and that's still 10. Now notice that we have two resistors in parallel. They are directly across from each other, and they have the same resistance. Whenever you have two parallel resistors with the same value, the equivalent resistance is simply half of that value. So individually they're both 10, so the equivalent resistance is going to be 5. So we can get rid of this. And replace it with a 5 ohm resistor. So now these three are in series with each other. So then we could just add them 10 plus 5 plus 5 is 20. So the equivalent resistance in the circuit is 20 ohms. Once you have the equivalent resistance, you could find the current that is delivered from the battery. And you could use V equals IR. So if you rearrange this equation to solve for I, the current is going to be the voltage of the battery divided by the total resistance or the equivalent resistance. So the voltage of the battery is 60 volts in this example, and the equivalent resistance is 20 ohms. So 60 divided by 20 is 3 amps. So that's the current that leaves the battery. Now, let's call this position A. And let's say this is B, C, D, E, and F. Now, in order to calculate the current that's flowing through each resistor, it's helpful to know the potential at each of these points. And we're going to say at point A, the potential is 0 volts. So now, if we travel in this direction from A to B, we're going towards the positive terminal of the battery. And the battery increases the energy of the circuit because it delivers power to the circuit. So as you go from A to B, it's going to be a voltage lift of 60 volts. So the potential at B is 60 volts. Now, something else they need to know is that whenever a current flows through a resistor, the current flows from a high potential to a low potential. So we have the current of 3 amps. It's flowing through the 10 ohm resistor. So let's call that just 3 amps. So that means this is positive and this is negative. So C is at a lower potential than B. So to calculate the potential at C, it's going to be the potential at B minus IR because C is lower than B. So the potential at B is 60 volts. The current flowing through the 10 ohm resistor is 3 amps multiplied by 10. So 3 times 10 is a voltage drop of 30. And then 60 minus 30 tells us that the potential at C is 30 volts. Now, let's go from A to F. Now, this 3 amp current, which flows through the battery, also flows through the 5 ohm resistor. Because this path here, they're all in series. Whenever there's only a single path for the current to flow, you have a series path, and the current flowing through that path is the same everywhere along that path. So what this tells us is that 3 amps of current flows through the 5 ohm resistor. And current always flows from a high potential to a low potential. So as we travel from A to F, that's going to be a voltage lift because we're going from the negative side to the positive side. So anytime you go against the current, the electric potential is increasing. If you're following the current, like we did over here, the potential decreased.
So to calculate the potential at F, it's going to be the potential at A plus IR because we're going towards a higher potential. So this is going to be plus instead of minus. So the potential at A is 0. The current flowing through the 5 ohm resistor is 3 amps times 5. So the potential at F is going to be 15 volts. Now let's get rid of this. And let's focus on the 10 ohm resistor because we now have the potential across C and across F. So we can calculate the current flowing through that resistor. Now voltage is equal to current times resistance based on Ohm's law. And voltage is also known as the potential difference between two points. So we know that the current is flowing in this direction. And also, current flows from a high potential to a low potential. So the potential at C is higher than the potential at A. So the voltage across that resistor is going to be the potential at C minus the potential at F. And that's equal to the current times the resistance. So the potential at C is 30. The potential at F is 15. And we don't know the current yet, but the resistance is 10. So 30 minus 15 will give us a voltage of 15 volts across that resistor. And so 15 divided by 10 is 1.5. So that's the current that flows through the 5 ohm resistor. So now we could calculate the current that flows through the other branch. So let's focus on junction C. At that junction, we have a current of 3 amps that is entering the junction. And 1.5 amps flows in this direction. Now, according to Kirchhoff's current law, or his junction rule, the total current that enters into a junction is equal to the total current that leaves the junction. So if we call this I1 and this I2, then this must be I3. And so I1 enters the junction, and the other two currents, they leave it. So I1 is equal to I2 plus I3. So I1 is 3 amps. I2 is 1.5. So I3 is 3 minus 1.5. So this is also 1.5 amps. So now we have the current flowing through the remaining three resistors. So I'm just going to put it here, 1.5 amps. Now, since the current flows from C to D, we know this is going to be positive, and this is negative, and it flows from D to E, so E is at a lower potential than D, and then it flows from E to F, which means E is at a higher potential than F. Now, let's calculate the electric potential at point D. So, the potential at point D is going to be the potential at point C minus IR, because as we go in the direction of the current, we're going towards a lower potential. So D is lower than C. The potential at C is 30. The current flowing through the 5 ohm resistor is 1.5. So the voltage drop is 1.5 times 5, which is 7.5. And so 30 minus 7.5 tells us that the potential at D is 22.5 volts. Now let's calculate the potential at E. So we have another voltage drop because we're going towards a lower potential as we follow the direction of the current. So it's going to be VD minus IR. So the potential at D is 22.5. We still have a current of 1.5, but this time it goes through a 3 ohm resistor. So 3 times 1.5, that's a voltage drop of 4.5. And 22.5 minus 4.5 gives us a potential of 18 volts at E. Now to confirm the answer, let's calculate the current going through the 2 ohm resistor. We already know it's 1.5, but let's confirm that answer. Because we have the potential at point F. So the potential at E minus the potential at F represents the voltage across the 2 ohm resistor. And voltage is equal to current times resistance. 
So the potential at E is 18, the potential at F is 15, and R is 2. So 18 minus 15 gives us a voltage of 3 volts. And so 3 divided by 2 is 1.5, which is in agreement with this answer. So now we've completely solved the circuit. We've calculated the current flowing through every resistor, and we also know the electric potential at every point in a circuit. And so that's it. Now if we wish to calculate the power absorbed by a resistor, let's say if we want to calculate the power absorbed by this resistor, we can use this formula, I squared times R. So the current that's flowing through it is 1.5 and the resistance is 10. So the power absorbed by that resistor is simply 22.5 watts. Now if we wish to calculate the power delivered by the battery, we can use this formula. It's voltage times current. So we have 60 volts times the current of 3 amps. And so that's going to be 180 watts. Now the power delivered by the battery must be equal to the power absorbed by each resistor. And that's the second way you can confirm if you have the right answer. So let's calculate the power absorbed by each resistor. So we already have this one, and we said that's 22.5 watts. Now let's focus on this resistor. So it's I squared times R. It's 3 squared times 10, and so the power absorbed by that resistor is 90 watts. And for this one, I squared times R is going to be 3 squared times 5, and so it's 45 watts for that resistor. And now for this one, uh, it's going to be 1.5 squared times 5, and that's 11.25. And then for this one, it's 1.5 squared times 3, and so that's only 6.75. And then for this one, 1.5 squared times 2, so that consumes 4.5 watts. So now let's add up all the numbers. So we have 90 watts plus 45 plus 22.5 and then plus 11.25 plus 6.75 and then plus 4.5 let's see if that adds up to 180 And indeed it does. So the total power absorbed by the resistors is equal to the power delivered by the battery. And so this circuit, the values that we have in this circuit is correct. Now let's work on a similar circuit, but one that's slightly different in a way. So we're just gonna add one more resistor to the circuit that we had before. And the values will change, of course. So what if we put a resistor right in the middle? So this time we're going to have a 120 volt battery. And this resistor is going to be 10 ohms. And this one is 12 ohms. And this is going to be an 8 ohm resistor. And then 3 9, 5, and in the middle, this is going to be a 4 ohm resistor. So feel free to pause the video. Calculate the current that is delivered from the battery and the current that flows through each resistor in a circuit. So go ahead and try this problem. Now the first thing we need to do is calculate the equivalent resistance. So we need to know which resistors are in series and which ones are parallel to each other. Now a series circuit is one in which the current has only one path to flow. So notice that the 3 and the 9 ohm resistor they're in series with each other because the current can't leave this junction. So there's a single path for the current to flow. So we can replace those two with a 12 ohm resistor. So now the circuit becomes what we have here. So this is still 10, 8, and 12. And now 
I can write it like this. So I'm going to replace these two with a 12 ohm resistor. And this is 5. Now we still have this resistor going in this direction. Now these two points are identical. So I can say that this resistor is going in this direction. It's the same as drawing it this way. Because they're attached to the same thing. So this is 4. The 12 ohm resistor is in parallel with the 4 ohm resistor. Now because these values are different, we're going to have to use a formula to find the equivalent resistance. And we can replace this 12 with the equivalent resistance. So the equivalent resistance between those two is going to be 1 over R1 or 1 over 4 plus 1 over R2 or 1 over 12 raised to minus 1. 1 fourth plus 1 twelfth is 1 over 3 if you use your calculator or if you like get common denominators. And then if you raise it to minus 1, it's 3. Now if you don't have access to a calculator, here's what you need to do. Multiply this fraction by 3 over 3. So it's going to be 3 over 12 plus 1 over 12. And 3 plus 1 is 4, so you get 4 over 12. And whenever you raise a fraction to the negative 1 power, you need to flip the fraction. So it becomes 12 over 4 which is the same as 3. So the equivalent resistance of those two in parallel is 3 ohms. Now notice that the 3 ohm and the 5 ohm, they're in series with each other. There's only one path for the current to flow. And 3 plus 5 is 8. So we can replace this with an 8 ohm resistor. And that 8 ohm resistor is in parallel with this 8 ohm resistor. And because they're the same, we know that the equivalent resistance of those two will be half of the individual values. So we can replace that with a 4 ohm resistor. So now the total resistance is going to be 10 plus 12 plus 4, which is 26 ohms. So that's the equivalent resistance. Now let's calculate the current in the circuit. So it's going to be the voltage of the battery divided by the equivalent resistance. And so that's 120 volts divided by 26 ohms. And so the current that leaves the battery is 4.615 amps. And that's around an answer. So keep that in mind. Now let's define this point as point A, B, C, D, E, and F. And we're going to assign point A a potential of 0 volts. So let's calculate the potential everywhere else, and at the same time, let's calculate the currents in other positions. Now, going from B to C, we know that the resistor, I mean the potential, decreases from high to low because the current is flowing in that direction. The current always flows from high potential to low potential. Now the potential at B, if we go from A to B, we're going towards uh, the positive terminal of the battery. So that's going to be a voltage lift of 120. So the potential at B is 120 volts relative to A. So now that we have the potential at B, we can calculate the potential at C. And so it's going to be a voltage drop across this resistor. So the potential at C is going to be the potential at B minus IR. So at B is 120 volts and the current flowing through the 10 ohm resistor is 4.615 multiplied by resistance of 10. So the potential at C is 73.85 volts. Now let's go from A to F. So the current is flowing in this direction and that current is the same as this current so this potential is positive and over here this side of the resistor is negative so F is at a higher potential than A so the potential at F is going to be the potential at A plus IR because as we go from A to F 
we're going towards the positive terminal of the resistor, towards a higher potential. So A is 0, the current is 4.615, and the resistance is 12. So 4.615 times 12, that will give us a potential of 55.38 volts at F. Now that we have the electric potential at point C and F, we can now calculate the current going through the 8 ohm resistor. Now the current is going to be flowing in this direction so that it can reach the negative terminal of the battery. So therefore we know that this part of the resistor is positive and this part is negative. Also we can see that C is at a higher potential than F, so current always flows from high potential to low potential. So the potential at C minus the potential at F represents the voltage across the 8 ohm resistor. So remember, voltage is the potential difference between two points. And that's equal to I times R. So the electric potential at point C is 73.85 volts. And at point F is 55.38 volts. And the resistance is 8 ohms. So 73.85 minus 55.38 that gives us a voltage of 18.47. So to calculate the current, it's going to be 18.47 divided by 8. So the current that flows through that resistor, let's see if I can fit it in here, it's 2.309 if we round it. So I'm going to highlight that in red. amps. So if we have a current of 4.615 going towards point C and a current of 2.309 amps going this way, now the current that flows through this branch and that branch has to be the difference between these two values. And because we have two different branches from C to D and C to E, we don't know what the answer is yet. However, there is something that we can do. So let's say if we have a picture that looks like this. So from C to E, we know that this represents a resistance of 12 ohms. It's 3 plus 9. And the current flowing through that branch is going to be the same through the 3 ohm resistor and through the 9 ohm resistor. So we're going to say this resistance is 12. And the current that flows through this branch goes through a 4 ohm resistor. Now the current that is going towards junction C, which is right here, over here this is a junction E. The current that flows to C is 4.615 amps. And the current that leaves that branch is 2.309. Now the current that leaves junction C to be split off into these two resistors, that's going to be the difference of 4.615 and 2.309. And so that's going to be 2.306 that goes in that direction. Now notice how we're going to calculate the current that flows through each of those two branches individually. So let me just redraw this. So right now we have a current of 2.306 amps going in. So we'll call it IT. And this is a, a 12 ohm resistor and this is a 4 ohm resistor. So with this information alone how can we calculate the current that flows through the 12 ohm resistor and the current that flows through the 4 ohm resistor? Now, let's call the current that flows through the 12 ohm resistor I1 and the current that flows through the 4 ohm resistor I2. We know that I1 plus I2 has to add up to the total current entering uh, this little circuit. And notice that this resistance is less and this resistance is more. So which branch should have a greater current? Is I1 greater than I2 or is I2 greater than I1? 
Now, whenever you decrease the resistance, the current increases. So because this resistance is less than the other one, I2 is greater than I1. So because this is three times less than 12, I2 is going to be three times greater than I1. So we need two numbers that add up to 2.306. And we know that I2 has to be three times the value of I1. So we can replace I2 with three I1. So it's I1 plus three I1, and that's equal to 2.306. And so four I1 is equal to that number. And 2.306 divided by four tells us that I1 is 0.5765 amps. So to calculate I2, it's going to be 2.306 minus 0.5765. And so this current is 1.7295. As we can see, this number is three times greater than that number. Now it turns out that there's another way in which we can get the answer. Because sometimes these two resistors may not be so nice. You may have some other numbers that are just hard to work with. So let's call this R1, the 12 ohm resistor, and this is R2. So let's say if we wish to calculate I1, it's gonna be the total current times the other resistor, R2, divided by the total resistance. So the total current entering this little circuit is 2.306 and R2 is 4. R1 plus R2 is 16. So it's 2.306 times 4 over 16 and that will give you 0.5765. Now if you wish to calculate I2 you can use this equation. I2 is going to be the total current times the other resistor R1 divided by the total resistance, R1 plus R2. So the total current is still 2.306. R1 is 12. R1 plus R2 is 16. So it becomes 2.306 times 12 divided by 16. And that will give you this current, 1.7295 amps. So let's write this information here. So we have the current flowing in this branch. That's through the 12 ohm resistor, so that's point five seven six five amps we don't need this information anymore so let's just get rid of that and we can get rid of this now the current flowing through the 4 ohm resistor we said that's point five seven six five amps I should have made the circuit bigger. Now, let's calculate the potential at D. So the current is flowing through the 3 ohm resistor in that direction. So this has to be the positive terminal of the resistor, and this is the negative terminal of the resistor. As it flows from C to D, we know that D is a lower potential than the potential at C. So we can say that the potential at D is the potential at C minus IR. The electric potential at C is 73.85 and the current flowing through the 3 ohm resistor we now know it to be 0.5765 so let's multiply that by 3 and so the potential at point D is 72.12 volts. So now let's calculate the electric potential at E. So it's going to be the potential at E minus the potential at D. Actually, wait, let's not do it that way. The potential at E, rather, is the potential at D minus IR. We're still flowing in the direction of the current as we go from D to E. So we still have a voltage drop across this resistor. So anytime we follow the direction of the current, if we move from D to E in the direction of the current, that's going to be a voltage drop. If we move from E to D against the current, that's a voltage lift. So the potential at D 
we set it 72.12 and the current is 0.5765 times the resistance of 9. And so the potential at E is 66.93 volts. Now I need to correct this current. The current flowing through the 4 ohm resistor had to be the difference between this current, this one, and that one. So I believe it was like 1.7 something. So if we take 4.615, Subtract that by 2.309 and subtract that by 0.5765. This current was supposed to be 1.7295 amps. Now let's confirm this answer because we now have the electric potential between C and E. So we have the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor. So current is going to flow from C to E from high potential to low potential. So VC minus VE, that's going to be the voltage across the 4 ohm resistor. So VC is 73.85, VE is 66.93, and that's going to equal I times 4. So 73.85 minus 66.93, that's a voltage of 6.92. And divide that by 4, that will give us a current of 1.73 amps, which if you round it, that's about the same as 1.7295. So we know that the numbers that we have so far are correct. Now we have the potential at E and F. So let's calculate the current that flows from E to F. So it's going to be VE minus VF, and that's equal to IR. So the potential at E is 66.93. The potential at F is... 55.38 and the resistance is 5. So 66.93 minus 55.38 that gives us a voltage of 11.55. So if we divide that by 5 then the current flowing through the 5 ohm resistor is 2.31 amps. To confirm this answer notice that the current that flows from D to E and the current that flows from C to E must equal the current that flows from E to F, which is this current. So if we add 0.5765 plus 1.7295, that gives us a current of 2.306, which if you round it, that's approximately 2.31. So we have confirmed every value in this circuit. So all the potentials and the currents flowing through each resistor that you see is correct. Now we can calculate the power absorbed by each resistor and the power delivered by the battery, but you know how to do that at this point. So you can check it that way as well. The power delivered by the battery has to equal to the total power absorbed by all of the resistors. And that could be the final check if you want to make sure your work is correct. So that's it for this video, and now you know how to solve any type of series parallel combination circuit where you have one battery and just a bunch of resistors. So thanks again for watching.